Well, hello there, good people. Hi, I'm Jason Green Country Agriforestry. That beautiful black material that I've just scattered all over my corn patch here is worm castings. I made them myself over the course of a year using some special materials. And I'll show you how to do that next. We use a lot of wood chips out here in the garden for weed suppression, for water retention, but also as a source of carbon material and fertility. As it turns out, this material is excellent for keeping your worms in as well. But you don't want to use it in this really coarse form. Come along, and I'll show you how to prepare the wood chips to be used in a worm bed. Let's go better stay. People strolled into Ottawa. Well, keep your eyes open, don't forget what you see here today. The crowd gathered round, all around the center of Ottawa. The world crowded round, just to hear what the people would say. It's a love, it's strong. She's free. Love is all we need. Driving away until we find the true north. Riding away until we find the true north. Strong. I've got my wood chips prepared and sifted and they're ready to be used as bedding for the worm material, but they need to be saturated first, soaked with water, because the worms, they don't really like having dry skin. I don't want to use city water for it, so I've got this manual pump here connected to a sand spike deep underground. No chlorine in that water, which means it's going to be good for the worms. Yeah, that'll work. Now we all know that putting manure on your garden is one of the best things that you can possibly do. And worm manure is some of the best out there. In addition to the macronutrients and micronutrients that are found in worm manure, there are also a host of beneficial soil microbes, bacteria and protozoa that live inside the digestive system of the earthworm. Wood chips are soaked to the point where they're about ready to be used. I'm going to show you how to go about setting up the rest of your worm bin system. We're going to start out with two 27 gallon teftons. Now, you can use anything you want to to get your wood chips soaked. You can even soak them in one of these teftons. I just happen to have spares lying around, so I use that one there. Don't let it alarm you. One tote needs to be prepared specially. Have a look at the lid here. You can see from the light shining through there that I've taking the precaution of drilling minute holes in the top of this lid at regular intervals. This allows for water, water vapor and oxygen exchange through the lid. Can you see the holes in the bottom? We have holes in the bottom of the toad as well. This allows for water and other fluids to drain out. Also drilled at the same intervals. Now worms can get somewhat adventurous. You don't want them to go find the bottom of your bin and crawl out through those tiny little drainage holes. Small as they are, an earthworm is even smaller, especially whenever it's young. So what we've got here is a little bit of sand. This is coarse grain sand, not, not playground sand. This is the kind of stuff that you find for sale to be used as traction for uh, keeping your tires from slipping on the road. We'll just sprinkle this down here at the bottom. It won't block the holes. 
At least it won't block any water for draining out of the holes. But it should provide a barrier to prevent any adventurous earthworms from warping their way down through those little holes. So that fine grain sand settles into these little grooves where we put the holes in the first place, and that will stop the earthworms from getting too adventurous. And now we'll put our moistened wood chips into the bin. These wood chips are a variety of species. Mostly you want hardwoods, not a whole bunch of softwood like pine and hemlock and cedar, which would be irritating to a worm's tender skin. to ensure that we have proper drainage. Now we've got holes at the bottom of the bin, but we need something to catch whatever happens to drain out, which will be excess water and some of the waste byproducts of the worms. Worm tea, if you prefer. I like to keep the, the bedding just moist enough so that we don't have a lot of flow through. But if you're leaving this out to the elements and exposed at the top, you're going to get rainwater and other stuff flushing through the system, and you'll accumulate quite a bit of liquid fertilizer in this lower container. The two bins will fit very snugly together and there won't be a whole lot of space for you to capture your leachate from. Now some people will put an arbor hole through the bottom so they can just turn a spigot to release the excess moisture. Since I'm not really going to be doing a whole lot of harvesting of the liquids, I don't feel the need to put one of those in my bin, but you do what works best for you. To keep your upper bin from settling on the bottom, Take a few bricks, and arrange them across, just like so. Alright, now we're going to take our bottom bit, set it down here. And this is a fairly large setup, so if you're not particularly strong, you might need a little bit of help, or build a smaller system. Six gallons of water at eight pounds a gallon is about 50 pounds, plus, well, not a whole lot of weight in wood chips. So this is 50 pounds, plus or minus, worth of lifting. Use your legs, not your back. And there we have it. Our upper bin with the holes, the drainage holes, and the air vents at the top is now set nestled into the lower container to catch anything that leaches through. There's enough of a gap on the bottom so that we can collect any liquid that passes through the system. And of course that sand at the bottom of our upper bin stops the worms from migrating down into the lower bin where they won't be fed. But wait you say, hang on a second, where am I going to get the worms from? Well that's a valid question. Whenever I started making my own worm compost, I didn't want to go to the trouble of collecting all the worms myself, so I bought them. And if you're thinking of doing something similar, it's a perfectly acceptable way to go. You can get your worms from bait shops or worm farmers. I got mine from a fellow by the name of Greg Allison. He's on YouTube. You should check him out. But you say, well, all the worm farmers out there right now, they charge too much for the worms or they're out of stock. What will I do then? Well, there's a way you can get your own worms, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. If you're like most people, you have spots in your yard where grass and debris and stuff like that likes to accumulate. Oh look, there's a little lamb's quarter growing up through here. This is on concrete, so it's growing in the soil that's accumulated underneath this mat of grass and weeds. What else is under here? Well, let's take a look. Oop, I saw a movement. Did you see it? I saw it. There's two of them. No. I'm a liar. There's three. No, there's four. Okay, there's there's that one there. We got that one there. That one there. That one there. Oh, nope, five. There's there's another one right here. There's five. Okay. Oh, there's more. Six. Seven, eight, got away, 
nine. That's nine worms all together. And look what they're in. At the bottom of all this grass and leaves. Oh, sorry, hang on a second. Here's, that, make that ten. All right, so at the bottom of all that grass and leaves, we have this material here. Guess what that is? Well, that's, that's the decomposed remains of that grass and leaves. That's worm castings. And just like that, ten little worms. I think these are blue worms. Uh, Greg sells the red wigglers, but I mean, these might be reds. They're awful small, juveniles, recently hatched. Let's go ahead and get them a little bit of that material to keep them in for the moment. But as you can see, if I just keep on digging into this, and that was a tiny little spot, if I keep on digging into this, this material, I'm going to keep on finding more worms. Uh, any place where there's moisture, the worms are going to be. They don't like it where it's dried out, so this stuff here that's dried, no worms in that. But here where we have moisture, <laughs> and grass, <laughs> you're going to see worms in this. You'll see a lot of worms in this. Let me just sort of scrape a little chunk here. I'll bet there's worms inside this patch here. 15, 16, 17. These are little juveniles. 18. But Jason, you say. I don't have one of those piles of decaying debris in my driveway that I can use to get my own worm factory started up. What can I do then? Well, don't worry, good people, I've got the solution for you. Hang tight. The thing that it takes to attract any kind of living creature are its requirements for life. And just about everything requires food, water, and shelter, correct? All right. Well, the food for worms is decaying vegetation. Now, whenever we are keeping worms for composting, we're feeding them our kitchen scraps, mostly decaying vegetation. But these weeds that we pulled out of the garden while I was in the midst of preparing to plant the corn, well, these are also decaying vegetation, and we have quite a few of them. And there's a broad assortment here. There might already be some worms in this material. It's only a day or two old. And right here is a great spot. Okay, let's have a look. So this is underneath the pecan tree, and although we've got a bit of light right now. We have at least some partial shade throughout throughout the day so that we have shelter. We're going to stack this up high in a mound. There we go. So here's food, shelter. There's probably some worms living nearby anyway. But this is the kind of place where worms would want to live. Yep, see there's, there's some worms living nearby already. You can tell from all these worm casts here Worms are already living here. Yeah, we got moisture, we got food, we got shelter, we've got worms. Now, setting up the smorgasbord right here for them is going to draw them in even more. But we need to do a little something extra to bait our traps, so to speak. Just like any other living creature, worms enjoy the company of their own kind. So, the best lure that you can attract worms is, well, other worms, or in this case, worm castings. What? You don't have any worm castings? That's okay too, because the thing that's in the worm castings that the worms smell and are drawn to is going to cause them to come out of the woodwork and go investigate that new opportunity of moisture, shelter, food, is ammonia. So here we have a couple of gallons of water that we've just pumped out of our well. We're just going to add a little tiny bit to it. Just enough. To draw them in. And here we go. I'm gonna soak this entire stack. Well that's pretty good. But I think we need to add some more material to it. Let's go ahead. Oh, 
hard work. Soak it in good. All right, now if we keep this moist, we keep it sheltered. The worms are going to be drawn from all around to come enjoy this little minor paradise that we shaved for them. All we got to do, keep it sheltered from the worst of the sun there, keep it from drying out. few days, we'll be able to start coming in here and breaking apart this stack and finding all kinds of worms. This isn't weeds, this is food for your worms and fertility for your garden. So here we go. Just take your handy dandy sickle grass knife, whatever you've got to cut with, whenever you've got things that you don't need, grass, geraniums, there's some kind of forbs in here, I'm not sure what that is, oh there's some horsetail. No, mare's tail, mare's tail, horse tail is on fire. Alright, geraniums, some of that shepherd's purse is in there, some mare's tail, I don't know what that is, some grass. So all of this stuff, all of this stuff here, potentially worm food, right? And over here I've got, uh, that's an Egyptian walking onion. <laughs> We're not going to feed that to the worms, but this chickweed here, oh yeah, we can definitely feed chickweed to the worms. You can eat chickweed yourself too. Nice, it's full of water, full of minerals, and little tiny white flowers on it. I'm just going to collect some of this chickweed here. Okay, let's talk about temperature ranges, shall we? This is a black tote, so you don't want to have it out in direct sunlight. It'll get too hot in there. You don't want your worms to cook. Uh, outside temperatures right now, we're getting into the, the upper 40s, lower 50s at night. We're getting ready to be in the 60s this next week or so. So it's going to be perfectly comfortable for them. Uh, well, shoot, they were outside whenever we caught them, remember? With only just a couple of millimeters of grass and soil to hold in moisture and provide them with shelter. So putting them up here under the carport is about all that's going to be required. Okay, so here's some worms I collected earlier. Also, a couple of the of the uh, the leftovers that I got from Greg over here as well. So I've got a mixture of the uh, the red wigglers and some blues are in here. Just gonna put them over here. Look at them crawl! Look at them crawl! Look at that. So there's all kinds of new worms just introduced to the bedding material. The Murasaki purple sweet potato. Some more vegetations in there. A little eggshell. Uh, you can give them things like coffee grounds, stuff like that. Ah, here's that 20 or 30 worms that we just picked up. Go ahead, add those guys in. Ooh, these guys. I'll go ahead and give them some of this vegetative material here. Now, how much should you feed your worms? Ah, it depends. You want to feed your worms about once a week. So put something in here for them to eat. They like things with <laughs> more nutrition. They probably like the chickweed a lot better than anything else we put in here, in all honesty. You can give them uh, coffee grounds. Sprinkle those in. Coffee grounds are fine. They're full of nitrogen too, so they're good for your garden whenever they decompose. You can even add the filters. The filters are fine if it's a paper filter, of course. A little biodegrade in time. Feed the worms. Can give them things like eggshells. Go ahead and crumble them up. Okay. Yeah. It's a lettuce leaf. I think that's a bit of canna leaf there. We got the the canna root. Remember, I'm uh, preparing dinner. 
I like to use the canna instead of the potato. Of course, we use sweet potato as well, but little bits of that canna root are fine. You can feed them those. Take shells. Bits of carrot. Just no onions, no garlic, okay? No onions, no garlic. And then it's nice to bury that a little bit. You don't want, here's the thing, you don't want to overfeed. All right, so feed them a little bit and then wait about a week or so and come back and see how much of what you fed them has been consumed. And if it's been consumed, you can feed them a little bit more. If it hasn't been consumed, then feed them less the next time. There you go. Keep an eye on your moisture content. As long as it feels nice and moist to you, then it'll be nice and moist for the worms. Cover them up. And in about 90 days, they will multiply by an order of magnitude. So within six months, you may want to consider going ahead and getting a second tote and dividing them up in between two totes. And within a year, of feeding your worms, multiplying them, you're going to have this wonderful, rich, black material, which is 100%, well, very close to it, 100% worm castings. A little bit of that wood left in there, not much at all. Now, what happens whenever you get too many worms? Put them out in your garden. Keep on mulching your garden feeding your worms in the garden and they'll keep on producing this manure for you out of your weeds out of your scraps free fertilizer Did I mentioned free abundant an endless supply if you were wealthy you could buy it but you don't have to be rich to have rich soil. Well, good people, that's all I've got for you right now. Hey, if you found this video informative or entertaining, maybe a little bit of both, you know what to do. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and bang that notification bell so you'll be notified of new videos whenever they come out. As I said, that's all I've got for you right now. I'll catch you next time.